The Adventure Pals is a game coming out on Nintendo Switch on April 3rd, and we can talk about it right now, but we're only a few hours into it, so in lieu of a full review, here's a little bit of a first impressions of The Adventure Pals. This is a game published by Armor Games and developed by Massive Monster. It was a Kickstarter game back in 2016, it raised about $30,000, and now it's coming to Switch. So this game is kind of Adventure Time if they made it into a video game. And I know they have made Adventure Time video games, but the Adventure Pals just has that same sort of irreverence. The hero kind of looks like Finn. He's got this weird giraffe, aptly named Sparkles, I guess, that, that almost functions like, like Jake in some respects. Uh, he's used as a, a kind of helicopter. The giraffe's tongue sticks out and it spins around. It's very goofy. There's also a pet rock that helps you out in combat and adventuring. And it's all just deliciously weird and goofy and dopey. And there's these different things where like you're trying to just help people out but then there's this weird guy named Mr. B that keeps on kidnapping your family members and is apparently trying to turn old people into hot dogs I'm I'm having a little trouble following the the overall plot of this game because it's so absurd and ridiculous but I'm generally having a good time uh, it's primarily a platformer where you go through uh, five different levels that make up an entire stage and you're just looking to get to the end, usually completing some sort of quest, but it's nothing that you really need to look out of the way for. Like in one, you have to collect a bunch of berries, and you're just going to find these berries as you go through the level. Or it might be something like you need to get a postage stamp for a mailman, and that postage stamp's just at the end of the five levels. That's, that's how the game has been going for the first hour or so. The platforming isn't really anything too difficult, but it's got some inventive things to it. Uh, the giraffe, you can kind of use him in different ways to, like, uh, slingshot you across a room, or maybe it triggers a switch, and then you kind of need to figure out where to go. In all honesty, this game, in addition to the Adventure Time references, reminds me a lot of Kirby, in that it's this very simple and straightforward platformer that's mostly just enjoyable, but not all that difficult. It's even down to the point where this is probably better in co-op, much like how Kirby Star Allies is better with two to four players. And this does have drop-in and drop-out co-op, and it's generally a, a pretty fun time from when I've been playing it. If there's one thing that I think kind of separates this from something like a Kirby Star Allies is that the sense of movement in it is really fun. Uh, you have a lot of versatility with the giraffe and the fact that, you know, his tongue is a helicopter. Once again, totally... Not, not sure of that thing, but you kind of can move around the screen in interesting ways, and it's fun, uh, as opposed to something more straightforward, like just a run-of-the-mill platformer. And you also have abilities in this game that are increased or added as you level up. Uh, defeating enemies and doing other things gets you experience points, and then you level up and have the ability to pick one of three different abilities. Like, you can make your pet rock attack and help you out in battle. Or, as you reach a certain combo, which is done by killing a lot of enemies in succession, then your giraffe can give you a boost. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward, pretty neat, but... So far, I'm hoping it, it gets a little deeper as I go through. I'm right now in the second world. There seems to be about five, according to PR materials. So we'll see how it holds up over the course of that adventure. I hope it gets maybe a little more deep and a little more challenging. Right now, the worst thing about it is that uh, spikes start off as an instant death, which can be very frustrating, but then one of the abilities you can get through leveling up is making it so you, you don't die immediately after touching spikes, which is very helpful. But so far, it's been a little bit on the easier side, but we'll come back, have a full video review in a few days when we are all done with the game and can share our final thoughts with it. So, yeah, that's that. If you want to see more stuff like this, then be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, we're here at Nintendo World Report TV, and if you want to see us do more kind of first impression-y stuff like this, uh, holler in the comments below, or on the side, or however you can access the comments. Thanks for listening.